It's an opportunity to show things in a way that people are not expecting. This year is a very good uh, advance in our uh, ability to illustrate technology and craftsmanship working together. These, uh, these pieces all portray, I think, ingenuity. I think they um, engender a sense of wit. I think they show originality. Uh, they show artistry. They show engineering. Uh, we're utilizing new technology. I met Malcolm Appleby in 1980 and um, he's always been the most extraordinary craftsman and artist and uh, engraver and I still have a piece that he engraved for me in 1980. Most people will utilize a design which will be on a computer and then honed and so forth. This is an artist who's actually utilizing a tool and as his eye goes round he makes up the design as he goes along. Now these are these are skills that are formed over many many years of um, understanding your materials and your tools and so to me the, the fact that we've got his work on a desk is a fantastic illustration of what uh, humans are capable of. This is the first major brass piece that I've worked in um, and it was a very forgiving material for me. You know, it loved me as much as I loved it. I use hammer and chisel for this. I use a tiny little hammer um, and a chisel and I sort of tippy-tappy, tippy-tappy like that and I sort of get great freedom of movement um, and the, um, the brass allowed me great depth as well. I was able to chisel very deeply um, and that depth reflects the light, you know, and that all shows up because it's, a, it's much a light thing as anything else because looking at it edge on, it's catching the light in all sorts of directions and if you move around the table, the light's following you um, and uh, it gains a life of its own. And David, I guess, probably getting on for 10 years and we must have talked about it several times. I think it started off because I n always felt that the way I break up paintings often when I'm painting them and by putting very definite brush strokes and more painterly marks in them, whether it's faces or other things, would translate well into marquetry. But obviously I'd never tried it, so I needed someone to do it for me because I wasn't actually going to make the thing myself. So I've met numerous artists in my life. Um, this is a friend. This is a, uh, a fantastic artist. Uh, who's at the top of his game at the moment. His originality, his uh, ability to um, be absolutely of the moment, uh, to be current, to be uh, informed, um, the, the way that he understands where we are in life uh, is unique, I think. It is the culmination of understanding what an artist uh, does, what an artist can contribute and how the manifestation of those two, which is very difficult in, in furniture, of how the artist in furniture actually results. But I had a pretty good idea of if certain kinds of picture, having made collages in the past, which were a similar idea that paintings translated into another sort of medium again broken up in a certain way. So I thought I'd know how to do it, but obviously we'd never tried it before. And it's very interesting doing something out of a, a medium which is, you associate with the way you live, not um, looking at something as a purely an image. What's mesmerizing about seeing the work of these craftsmen, and obviously that Lindley works with some of the best craftsmen in the business, is just seeing their sort of professionalism, their sense of um, uh, certainty about how the thing's going to look when it's finished. Um, there's incredible discipline and an, an extraordinary attention to detail. Obviously they're working with a material that I'm not used to working with, so it just looks like magic to me. Um, the, the story is just that she's an old friend of mine. She was my life model in my 20s. And I did that painting in Soho about 20 years ago and I loved it. Um, it was just, she sat with me one day, that painting came out of nowhere. Uh, I um, 
and it's been around. So it means a lot for me, that one. There's got a softness to it. I suppose it's a softness and a sort of classicism, uh, but at the same time, there's something a little bit sort of on edge about it. I thought that bridge the gap between the old and the new reflects what the screen is doing. I think we're sitting in a very interesting artistic place in the world at the moment. And the contribution of artists and craftsmen and engineers, makers, is becoming more and more important to the way that we enjoy and fulfil our lives. I don't really see a distinction between art and technology in a way. I think they're both about creative innovation. And I think that the, uh, often the um, one provides great insights for the other. And I think often some of the most exciting techie people I know um, were creative people or even went to art school and I think that often bringing those things together is going to be so important in the future as well in the next few years we're going to see so much technology affecting every part of our lives. Definitely in my bedroom or studio um, so I'm saving up. I thought about where um, this table should go and um, several places. I think the Victoria and Albert New Museum would be absolutely wonderful. Um, one of the livery companies would also be great. If I put my hat on as a collector, I would view each piece separately. In the desk, I could see it in a um, very modern house. I could see it in a loft. I could see it in a museum.